Hey, what's up everybody? So there is this trend on YouTube, especially for the past couple of months or even a year or so in the YouTube filmmaking scene, where people want to recreate or emulate the super 8mm film look. And this look is super popular for a reason. And that is because it helps them to tell a better story, but it also ups the quality of their visuals quite a bit. And the best part about it is if done right, the viewers will love this look no matter what. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing because I make weekly tutorials on DaVinci Resolve to ultimately help you up your video editing game. And with that being said, let's just jump right into Resolve and create some awesome film looks. So the way that we create this look is super simple yet super effective. And this will work in DaVinci Resolve free version and the studio version. So first of all, I want you to go ahead to the first link in the description and download the free asset pack. And what you get from it is three different backgrounds, a flash file and three different overlays, as well as a super 8mm sound effect. Now import them in DaVinci Resolve. And the first step that we want to do is drag your footage onto the timeline. And the way that super 8mm looks is it has a very low contrast profile. So first of all, we got to change that. Drag your clips onto the timeline and go to the color page. Now lower the contrast just right there. This is looking fine. And then up the brightness with the offset wheel. Just like that is looking pretty good. And then what we want to do is create another serial node. Alt S on your keyboard. And then drag in some teal into the shadows. And in gamma, midtones, drag in some orange. Because usually Super 8mm has some teal in the shadows and some very orangey highlights and midtones. So then do this with the other clip as well. First of all, lower the contrast quite a bit and then up the overall brightness with the offset wheel. Now, once you've done that, create a new serial node hitting Alt S on your keyboard and then put some teal in the shadows and some orange in the midtones, just like that. Now, once you've done that, we can go back to the edit page and start creating the foam look. So right now I want you to go to your media pool and choose what background that you wanna use. For me, I like to use the second one, so I just drag it onto the timeline above our footage and then delete the audio because we don't need that. Now with this background two selected, Let's go to the inspector in the top right corner and change the composite mode from normal to multiply. This makes us accessible to our footage below. Then what we want to do is duplicate this background layer uh, several times until it matches the length of our clip. Just do that by hitting Alt on your keyboard, left clicking on the clip and drag it to the right just like that and then we delete the rest we don't need and this looks pretty good so the next step is go to your media pool once again and drag in the overlay that you want to use let's use overlay 2 delete the audio click on the video file and then what i want you to do is go into the inspector in our top right corner and change the composite mode from normal to screen so with that being done, we get this nice overlay and I want to duplicate this a few times again so that it matches our video length and delete the rest. So right now things are looking pretty good, but how do we transition between those two clips? Because when we play this back, it doesn't look too nice. It's just a harsh cut and there comes the flash file in handy. So let's go to the flash file and drag this in, put it on top of the transition just zoom in quite a bit and just place it right there and also rearrange the audio. Now click on the flash file, go to the inspector in the top right corner and change the composite mode from normal to screen once again. Perfect. And what this does is, let's just watch this back. It is doing a nice flash transition between and with that being done, we can add some super 8mm sound effects to it. Just drag it in and also get it. we don't even have to duplicate it because it's long enough. And this is what it looks like. 
doesn't look too bad, right? So the next step that I want you to do is go to your effects library, go to open effects and type in grain and use the film grain. Now, if you don't have DaVinci Resolve Studio, you cannot access the film grain. I provided a link in the description where you can download a free film grain overlay. So make sure to do so if you have the free version. If you have the studio version, just use this film grain effect and drag it onto your footage, just like that. Now click on the footage and go to the inspector. Now in the inspector, choose the effects tab and choose the film grain, grain size and choose eight millimeter. Now increase the grain size quite a bit and increase the grain strength quite a bit until you see some nice grain coming. Now do the exact same thing with the other clip, just like right here. Choose eight millimeter, increase the grain size and increase the grain strength. And you can also increase the grain saturation. So this is looking pretty good to me. Keep in mind if you're using the film grain, this will be very tax heavy on your system. Now the next step that you can do is go to the search bar once again and type in film damage and just drag this film damage on there and right on there. And what this does is it makes us accessible to the film damage and you can blur this quite a bit even more. You can choose the temperature shift from a very cool temperature to a very, very warm temperature, just like that. And once you've done that, you've got yourself a nice and clean looking super 8mm film effect. Also, for those of you who don't have the studio version, film damage, I believe, is not accessible. So I will provide a film damage effect in the link in the description down below as well. Alright guys, so this is how you would create a super 8mm film look inside of DaVinci Resolve. So guys, that is all I got for now. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If so, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. Not only to not miss out on any upcoming content in the future, but also to help this video spread out to more people that might be interested in the same topic as well. So with that being said, hope you all have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.